Galimada, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today's vocal session with Shubha Chaki. My name is Shama Juda, and I'll be helping out with the Q&A portion of today's session. Um, if you did not just hear uh, her beautiful voice just now, don't worry, you'll get to hear more of her singing um, throughout the session. So just to quickly introduce Shubha, for those of you who don't know her, uh, she is an Indian classical vocalist trained from the age of four and is currently based in San Jose. She's won many state and national level awards in, in classical and semi-classical music, including National Talent Search Scholarship awarded by the Government of India for Hindustani Classical. She was also a regular artist at the All India Radio in Pune, India, and she's trained with gurus under Gwalior, Girana, and Banaras Karana. So some of her recent performances have been at Karen Utsav 2019, International Indian Icon 2018, where she made it to the finals, Kazana Guzzle Contest Finale, Masiki Cafe Series, Chame Guzzle, Kathak and Bharat Nathiam Productions, Sufiana Guzzles, and her performance at the India Community Center in the Bay Area. Along with um, performing at local events, Shubha also teaches music to intermediate and advanced students in the Bay Area. And I believe she's also taking online classes. So if you are interested in taking lessons, feel free to reach out to her, um, of course, if you enjoyed this session. So before I hand it over to her, um, I also wanted to just quickly add that I have personally taken a few lessons from Shubha myself. Um, and I have to say that she's truly an expert um, in vocal techniques and in Indian classical music. So I highly recommend asking questions today um, in the chat box and uh, we will be sure to try to get them answered. Um, so that's it from me and Shubha, uh, feel free to take it from here. Okay, so um, without further ado, let's get started. I just want to add uh, my genre that I prefer to sing and teach in. Uh, so it's Hindustani classical and uh, under the hood of semi-classical, I uh, sing ghazals, tumri, bhajan, Sufi songs, as well as uh, regional songs, uh, which is uh, Marathi and Bengali songs, Bengali being my mother tongue. And I grew up in Maharashtra, so Marathi. And also I'm enjoying some of the very interesting experimentation with uh, Indian classical fusion these days. So, so that's about me and let's get started about today's session. So all I want to say is uh, it's going to be very interesting because I'm going to explain why we do certain things, why we should follow certain techniques and what happens if we do not follow certain techniques. So it's all about uh, the concepts of uh, some certain techniques that we should follow in order to better our singing. And, uh, and of course, um, I'll explain as much as I can. There are some videos on my YouTube channel. If you feel uh, free, you can uh, look up after the session to check those videos. They have more detailed explanations. So the first uh, topic that we're going to touch base on is uh, singing high, low notes with ease. So this is a very interesting topic and uh, we'll definitely uh, go in detail as we explain. The second one, vocal warm-ups, why and how we should do the warm-ups. Taking care of your voice in general and also if you have sore throat. Um, the next one is overcoming stage fear when singing or even uh, any public presentations or public speaking. And last but not the least, the tips, uh, so, uh, some of the tips for Riyaz uh, that we all should follow. So moving on to the first slide. So it's uh, singing high low notes with ease. And uh, many of us, we, uh, when we start singing a song, we discover that, OK, maybe certain notes that uh, are high for us or certain notes are low for us. And uh, we have difficulty um, maneuvering through, through the song all the notes. And we will understand why that happens. So mainly that happens because um, of two reasons. One is either our dynamic range of the uh, voice uh, that we possess have um, is is not well developed, and uh, we we would work on uh, increasing or extending our dynamic range of the voice so that we can go all the way uh, low as well as all the way up high for a particular song, and for any scale that you are comfortable. And uh, the second reason that we are going to talk more about is we need we, we probably need to understand more about voice modulation. And once uh, we understand voice modulation techniques, then we would be able to easily apply those uh, in order to sing those high and low notes that we struggle. Um, so 
what is voice modulation? Voice uh, modulation uh, technique will actually um, further um, have us understand what type of voices we have. So we have four different types of voices, um, typically stomach voice that you may have already heard of. You should sing with stomach voice or you should refrain from singing with stomach voice for higher notes and all. So that is uh, stomach voice. Then we come uh, for chest voice uh, and then head voice and falsetto. So one thing I would like to uh, make a note here is that when we say stomach, chest, head, or falsetto, these are not the places that this vo these voices are produced from. So stomach voice is not produced from stomach. Uh, head voice is not produced from head. These are the voices, uh, they are they are, these names are given because we feel those vibrations coming from those places. So for stomach voice, we feel the power coming from the stomach and hence it is called stomach voice. Chest voice, of course, we feel uh, the vibrations in the chest um, and of course, um, you know, the power is coming from the chest. Head voice, we feel the vibrations in the head and hence uh, the name head voice. And of course, falsetto is a very different uh, type of voice that we probably will skip today. So, for these uh, typical, um, these three types of voices, um, all I can say is our vocal vocal cord uh, is nothing but bunch of muscles. And for stomach voice, we use all the bunch of muscles together to produce that particular voice. And uh, for chest voice, we use only some of these uh, muscles, not all these muscles. And for head voice, we use even fewer of those muscles. And hence, when you say you're using your stomach voice, you're actually putting in a lot of effort to bring out that voice uh, in, in particular tune. And um, similarly, when you say you're using chest voice, it's a little less effort because you're using less number of muscles. And also for head voice, uh, similarly, the effort is even further reduced because you're using even fewer uh, bunch of muscles. So um, also along the length of the vocal cord, so we have the vocal cord uh, as, as um, you know, long uh, bunch of uh, muscles, right? So along the length of the muscles, um, we have certain sections that these, um, I would say higher notes or lower notes are produced. So I would say when you uh, when you are going up really high, you would probably notice that you're actually lifting your head up while you're singing. Uh, you're trying to sing the higher notes. That's that, the reason is you're actually producing the voice from uh, the top portion of your uh, vocal cord muscles. And that's the region for higher uh, octave uh, notes. Um, then chest voice is definitely the wider uh, section that we have. Like typically, it's the uh, wider uh, mid portion of the um, vocal cord muscles. And uh, then coming to a very lower octave voice or deeper voice, or we call it bass voice, that is produced from further down. Like you will definitely feel uh, vibrations in the chest muscles if you um, activate uh, that bassy voice um, for for singing those lower muscle, uh, lower octave uh, notes. So coming to voice modulation back, when we understand what are these voices and how are they produced and where, where we should use which type of voice and how much of effort or how much of uh, power we need to uh, produce those kind of voices, that is what is called as voice modulation. And uh, we'll definitely see an example with a very popular song, Pirle Ayadu. <clears throat> so when I sing, you'll understand that um, I start with a very bassy voice. And because I'm singing, the, the, the song starts in a very lower um, portion of the octave. And then as we go up high and also at the end, towards the end, there is a um, higher up portion where I, I probably will use a little bit of stomach voice and you should be able to feel the difference. Um, and then I'll explain why I used that stomach voice there. Um. Mm -hmm. Kya ki te rasna ya rehna dur kya ki te dil kehraha usse mukammal kar bhi aao wo jo adhuri se 
जो अधूरी सी बात बाकी है वो जो अधूरी सी याद बाकी है वो जो अधूरी सी if you've noticed i started with a bassy voice because that was all in the lower octave so i modulated my voice to use very minimal um, amount of uh, vocal muscles and also i focused on producing that voice that bassy voice from from down in the chest like really further deeper in the chest and i was actually feeling the vibrations in the chest while i was singing the phir le aaya de and also when i um there was a, por a portion which uh, went up a little high in the mid mid section majboor kya kije ras na aaya rehna door kya kije dil keh raha usse mukammal कर भी आओ दैट मुकम्मल कर भी आओ दैट आओ डेफिनेटली आई यूज वॉइस मॉड्यूलेशन टू ब्रिंग आउट अ लिटल बिट ऑफ हेड वॉइस इवन वेन आई वॉज स्विचिंग फ्राम चेस्ट टू हेड और लोअर ऑक्टिव टू अ लिटल बिट ऑफ हायर नोट्स सो दिस इज लाइक आई वॉन्ट टू एक्सप्लेन हाउ दीज वॉइस मॉड्यूलेशन टेक्निक्स एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दीज टाइप ऑफ वॉइस विल हेल्प यू प्रैक्टिकली सिंग प्री मच एनी सॉन्ग थ्रू थ्रू एंड थ्रू बेसिकली सो हाई एंड लो नोट्स शुड बी प्री मच ईजी इफ यू फॉलो दीज and just uh, mentioning the last uh, portion which i went up all the way high and uh, you probably have noticed i used a little more effort so that was the stomach voice which i used now the stomach voice is sparingly used for light music or semi classical definitely classical uh, stomach voice is encouraged and um, nobody will teach you about chest and head voice in classical uh, stomach voice is the only voice that you should be using um, of course there are uh, little nuances that you should use your chest voice uh, for but uh, for light music and semi classical i would say stomach voice is used for uh, showcasing or 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 uh, expressing certain emotions certain feeling certain mood um head voice is used for expressing certain feeling that you want to just subtle it out or just fade uh, fade out so that is where your head voice will be used better and stomach voice especially for this particular song the place that i sang uh, with stomach voice higher up i wanted to express a little bit of pain um the the pain of separation um the longing uh, pain so that is when i used uh, stomach voice in order to um express just a little more uh, feeling uh, into the song so that is about uh, voice modulation and uh, observing transition points while switching between the octaves so when i am explaining uh, bass voice and then uh, bringing out a little bit of stomach voice or or switching from lower octave to mid octave to higher octave of course this is very theoretical once you start singing a song you will understand what it takes actually to transition between these um, octaves smoothly with your uh, vocal muscles there are certain transition points there are um, there are there like in order to bring out that bass i could have actually not used that bassy voice i could have used my normal chest voice phir le aaya dil which wouldn't have uh, expressed the same feeling versus phir le aaya dil majboor kya kije so there is a transition point in your uh, vocal muscles from mid octave to lower octave um, to just making a switch from that regular voice to bassy voice and then from mid to higher there is a uh, transition point probably it's around pa or dha for me uh, it will be 
def- different for each one of you because each of our voices are different and textures are different. So uh, you have to just be aware of where the transition happens from your uh, chest voice to head voice. And uh, you, if you're aware, then you can easily transition and modulate uh, your voice um, and bring out those higher notes beautifully and with ease. So that's about um, this particular topic. And there is there's a video up, up there on my YouTube channel. I have explained a little more in detail. Uh, if you want to check out, feel free to check that out. Um, so if you have any questions, we can take maybe one or two questions uh, now related to this. No specific questions for this slide yet, but again, everyone, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to share them into the Q&A portion of this uh, session. Um, Shubha, we are getting compliments for your voice, though, that you have a very smooth, velvety uh, voice. (laughs) Thank you. And I'm sure after this uh, session today, um, many of us will get inspired to um, apply these techniques, not just learn, but also apply them uh, for their regular singing. So uh, let's continue. Going on to the next slide, uh, we will do some, uh, we will do, learn some vocal warm up techniques. And first of all, why do we need to do vocal warm ups? So, um, as I said, vocal muscles are nothing but muscles. Vocal cords are a bunch of muscles that you have to constantly maneuver through, move around, and play around to bring out the right uh, type of texture, right type of tonal quality in order to sing a particular song, right? So, For any muscle, we need exercising, we need warming them up in order to make them work the way they should. And hence, uh, we need warm up, uh, vocal warm ups. You may have noticed if you have, if you are asked to sing, um, all of a sudden you pick up the mic and you start singing, you may not be comfortable singing or you know, you may not be uh, feeling that smoothness in your voice. Um, but vocal warm ups, if you just do a quick uh, five minute vocal warm up before singing or before even speaking, I would say public speaking presentations definitely uh, utilize these techniques for uh, warming up your voice so that you're comfortable uh, being in the uh, being in front of the audience and, and um, you know, uh, doing your showtime. So uh, let's learn the first warm up technique that I follow. Uh, That's deep breathing. And I'll explain why this deep breathing is so essential. Any form of deep breathing will actually relax your nervous system, relax your muscles. And any workout, uh, any warm-up exercise definitely needs your muscles to first relax and then start working out. So deep breathing um, technique that we're going to do today, probably as a group activity, um, is a very scientific uh, method. Uh, it's a proven method which actually calms the nervous system down. So what we do is we uh, breathe in. Uh, while we are breathing in, we count six, and then we stay in there. We hold our breath in there with a count of three, and then we breathe out with a count of six, and then we stay there out with a count of three. And this is one cycle. This completes one cycle. I will demonstrate this uh, quickly and then we can do it as a group activity uh, on our own individually. So starting now, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. So this is one cycle. And let's do it one more time when everybody is joining me and I'm going to count and, um, you know, show my hand so that you understand when to breathe in, stay there and when to breathe out and stay there. Okay, so let's get started. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three. Four, five, six, one, two, three. And then whenever you're ready, you can resume your normal breathing. This completes one cycle and um, 
more on uh, the number of cycles you do, let's say, uh, let's say 10 cycles, uh, you will start feeling that you're calming down and your mind is not rushing. And this will definitely help you just, uh, you know, uh, feel yourself more and then get started with the re regular activities that you're planning to do. So the next one uh, is humming. Humming is very interesting uh, warm-up exercise. We keep humming our um, favorite songs. Uh, we hum along the original, song, uh, original songs that we are hearing uh, on the playlist, and um, we don't realize how good it is, uh, how, you know, what benefits does it uh, give us. So humming, provided you're doing it the right way, will definitely help you, um, you know, definitely help you, um, uh, you know, get the warm up uh, very nicely done. Humming should be done when you are. Um, well, you should imagine a hollow space within your mouth, and then hum. So basically, how you do that is you roll up your tongue to the roof. Start um, like imagine you're holding something inside your mouth, and then start the hum. And then also uh, hum at a very um, comfortable note, like you don't hum at higher note or lower note. Just be very comfortable wherever you are uh, comfortable in whichever note, just do the humming there. But make sure to roll up your tongue, something like this. Mm. So this is one humming cycle. More you do this, uh, more you start feeling the vibrations in your chest and you start seeing uh, a resonance is created and that is the resonance which you will see more if you're uh, observing the hollow space in your mouth. So more space you create inside your mouth while humming, more is the resonance and more is uh, the, you know, more is the benefits that you get out of the warming up uh, uh, of the humming. Coming to the next one, which is pranayam. Um, mm -hmm. uh, pranayam, as most of us know, it's one of the most um, commonly used uh, breathing technique. Also, um, yeah, it's, it's pranayam. And one of the uh, pranayams that uh, is very essential for singers is brahmari pranayam. The name brahmari comes from the word brahmar, and brahmar means bumblebee. So if you've heard bumblebee around, you will see it makes a, a sound of so that is exactly what we are going to um, create while observing the uh, the techniques that Brahmari Pranayam um, dictates. So what we generally do is we close our ears with the thumb and we close our eyes with the four fingers. We are closing this while doing the Brahmari um, activity. Brahmari is nothing but humming, I would say. So again, follow the humming technique, make a hollow space in your mouth and do the hum, but make sure that you close your ears and the eyes um, to uh, do the Brahmari cycles. The reason we are closing the eyes and ears is we want to lock in the energy of uh, energy and the warmth of the um, activity that we're doing. We don't want to leak out any um, energy, um, uh, especially if you shouldn't be able to see any light from the corner of your eyes when you're closing down the eyes. Okay, and also keep your lips light. Don't close them tightly. If you keep your lips light, you will also feel the vibrations in your entire facial area and you'll feel really good about it. So that's Brahmari Pranayam. Of course, I have explained that in, uh, in the video that I have on my YouTube channel. Feel free to take a look at that. The next one is a very um, extensive topic, which probably we're not going to go in detail today. Uh, it's the vocal exercises or sargam alankars. People who are uh, music students and um, aspiring singers uh, who are taking uh, music lessons will know uh, sargam alankars are very essential for any uh, warm-up uh, exercises, any warm vocal warm-up exercises. And you do quick uh, few warm-up uh, sargam alankars and you're good to go for your performance or you're Good to go for a singing session. So vocal exercises are very important, uh, which we probably will cover in any any of the next sessions. Um, I just wanted to bring that up, uh, but definitely that's a long, uh, long time um, friend uh, of your for music um, learning.
Okay. So moving on to the next slide, do we have any questions? One question. Um, okay. Someone was asking, um, how does one produce head voice? I feel when I go up the sargum, my voice hits a block or a wall. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, definitely, that's a very good question. And um, honestly, I struggled pretty much all my childhood. Uh, I, I didn't even know what was head voice and um, not. Uh, but uh, definitely, I figured out a way to do that. And that uh, goes uh, into this, um, you know, when, when we say observing transition points. So when you're hitting that roof, uh, the ceiling where you cannot go beyond, that means you're still using your chest voice or maybe stomach voice. And then um, since you're, you're using the entire bunch of muscles, you not not all the bunch in unison together is able to produce higher voice higher octave uh, uh, voice so we need to observe some certain switch points and as i said uh for me switch point uh for example is uh switch point for example for me is uh the um pa or dha for any octave um for the middle octave i would say so for example if i say <coughs> if i sing Sa Re Ga Ma Pa Dha So when I reach Dha, I already feel that I'm straining my voice. And definitely this is not the voice that I can continue moving up with. So I'm going to make a quick transition there. Pa Dha Ni Sa So I made a transition and It'll take some time for uh, for us to even understand what a transition means. But once you are aware of what you're doing, you'll probably understand, and uh, definitely you'll be able to do this. So yeah, it's it's a question of where you transit, uh, uh, which note you transit, and then consciously make uh, an effort for that. Any more questions? Nope, we're good. We'll, we'll ask them towards the end. We, have, we do have some questions, but we can save them towards the end. Okay, great. Okay, moving on um, to the next slide, how to take care of your voice. It's a very generic um, certain tips that uh, we all should know. Watch what you eat and drink. Definitely, um, you know, this goes to our daily food habit. Dairy is something um, that we are not much aware that it does harm to our uh, voc vocal uh, muscles or, you know, the, with dairy, I, I personally have sinus um, drips. So, and especially if you have allergic sinusitis, you definitely should watch out any dairy product, even warm milk, um, you probably would need to avoid as much as you can. Uh, or avoid it before singing, because as soon as you drink milk, you would see um, sinus flare-ups or or just you know just not regular drips that you will see um, happening. So watch out for dairy. Of course, yogurt is something that you should avoid um, at all times. Or if you are performing, just avoid uh, having it before the performance, one or two days, so that your system is clear of that. Um, Typically, any food items that increases your kapha and pitta, these, these are Ayurvedic terms. Um, so anything that increases your kapha uh, imbalance in the body or pitta imbalance in the body. So kapha will be la, the phlegm. Um, so any sweet items, any sour items, uh, definitely um, some, some of, for some of you dairy, yes. And cold um, chilled drinks, definitely avoid alcohol, avoid. And um, pitta causing items are spicy food. So at all times, uh, try avoiding um, pitta causing um, food. Also, uh, sour items will cause pitta if you take more uh, in quantity uh, than your body can take. So that is first one. Then second one is avoid overusing your voice. Just be mindful about talking very loud or um, shouting or, or just uh, keep, your, keep your energy conserved for singing more than um, spending it more outside of singing. So just be mindful about overusing or abusing your voice. 
Third one, follow our daily, daily regular routine of warm up and uh, singing regime. Uh, it's very essential to follow a particular time to uh, warm up our singing. Our body cells, our, our muscle, muscles have memory. Uh, so we know muscle memory, right? So it's basically every cell of our body has memory. And um, it, it remembers what time of the day you're requesting your, you know, your vocal muscles to sing. Those are cells. So they know and they get prepared. They get ready to just get going and assist you with the singing. So make sure that you observe a particular time to uh, sing and uh, follow that routine. Next one is understanding your pitch and sing in and around that. So avoid selecting any high or too low pitch uh, songs, especially uh, there are many um, on this uh, webinar, I'm sure, uh, love to sing on karaoke tracks and uh, typically original tracks. Very uh, rarely we take those tracks and then uh, pitch down or pitch up according to our pitch. Um, but definitely if you're using those original tracks, beware that, that those tracks are definitely, like I would say 90% of us do not fall in that uh, range of uh, the the notes uh, that those tracks have. So we we our scale is much lower than those tracks, and uh, we definitely need to be aware that more we are singing on those original tracks, we are basically causing damage to our uh, vocal muscles that we probably do not uh, uh, understand today, but maybe um, down the line, a few years down the line, you'll start, you start feeling that your voice tonal uh, quality change is changing, your, the texture is uh, lost and stuff. So watch out those um, original uh, track singing, karaoke singing, if you're doing that. Just be mindful about uh, whether, what is your pitch and if it is your pitch or maybe half, half a scale here and there, half note here and there is fine, but it should not be like my scale is B and I'm picking a song on D. That's definitely uh, not going to um, do good f for my uh, voice. Next comes uh, the sore throat remedies. These are some of the remedies that you should avoid. Uh, you should observe uh, if you have sore throat, uh, definitely not infection, but if you're just catching cold and you want to be uh, taking uh, care of it uh, just as home remedies. So drink lots and lots of fluid. Warm water is fine. Do not sing or overuse your voice with a sore throat. So basically do not sing if you have sore throat. And um, drink lots of fluid, warm water, Try avoiding milk. As I said, some people use turmeric milk, uh, hot turmeric milk. If you're using milk, use ginger, uh, crushed ginger in it. And that's my um, observation with my own body is that because milk will increase kapha and uh, ginger will basically just keep it down. Um, yeah, so it'll just basically balance. So if you're really um, in a habit of taking turmeric milk, add some ginger powder or gin crush, fresh uh, crushed ginger to it. Otherwise, just avoid uh, milk at all cost and just go on um, warm water. Avoid any sugar, dairy, sour, spicy food. Definitely what you're going to take care um, of your voice in regular times. You're going to be more uh, aware of those if you have sore throat. So that. And then uh, coming to the next one, it's a very interesting one. We always uh, say do gargle or swish with warm or room temperature water with a pinch of salt. When we say pinch of salt, it really means just a pinch of salt. It's not, it does not mean one teaspoon of salt or half a teaspoon of salt or even quarter teaspoon of salt. No, it is definitely just one pinch of your own um, hands, of your own fingers. So pinch of salt is uh, all that we need because we do not want to make the water salty. We want to make the water ionize with the salt. And ionizing the water will actually um, help to take away the excess water logging that happens in the um, vocal muscles while you're not feeling well. So it'll just take the excess water out. But if you put more salt than what you need, it's going to extract more water. So it's going to go into exhaust muscles and it's actually going to be drying up your throat. And that's definitely not doing any good for your uh, sore throat. So really, really watch how much of salt you're putting in for gargling or swishing. 
And the next one is concoction made of ginger, turmeric, honey, and all those uh, good stuff. Um, you can uh, you can make a concoction, and you can look up my video, um, and it has uh, the formula or and how to make the concoction and stuff. So, and of course, feel free to uh, go with your concoction formula if you have any. And um, that's about taking care of your voice. Any questions? Yes, we do have some questions. Um, someone is asking, how do you prevent your voice from cracking when you go to higher notes? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that goes to voice modulation techniques. And uh, the voice cracks because you are probably using your stomach voice there. And you're probably not aware that you're using the entire uh, bunch of muscles um, and, and just, you know, trying to push it hard uh, to go up high. And uh, we don't, uh, we're not, it, it's, it's just like, you know, understanding the voice modulation techniques and uh, observing the transition point of your own voice will help to um, make the switches easy, make the transition from stomach to head voice or thinning out the voice, or just just a little bit of thinning out is fine um, to make sure that you're not using entire bunch of muscles of the vocal cord. So that'll definitely help with the cracking. And of course, I would say warming up will help uh, to warm up and um, get the full uh, dynamic range of your uh, vocal cords active when you're singing. So make sure to warm up every time you're singing and see if you're facing the cracking again, even then. And even if uh, you see that, then you probably are not using the voice the right way. So it's, it's your stomach voice, which is cracking. Cool. Any more questions? We'll save them towards the end, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, we are almost there. <laughs> Okay, so the next one is interesting one, uh, overcoming stage fright when singing. And this is something very interesting uh, because I have, uh, I mean, uh, I have like growing up, um, of course, I, I used to perform a lot and everything. But uh, every time I would go up on the stage, I would just get a jolt of like looking at the audience. I would be like, oh, wow. You know, like, uh, so stage fear is something all of us have it, more or less. Yes, more and more you f uh, face the audience, you're going to be um, better with that. Uh, but yeah, there are certain techniques that you can follow in order to actively um, you know, overcome the fear. So first of all, chew your tongue. Your own, uh, you know, like your own saliva will help you hydrate your, um, your vocal muscles. So when you fear, when you, when you face a fear or you, you are in a situation where you're actually um, scared to face the, the audience or, or something like that, you are, uh, your, your body responses, it'll dry up the voice. The first response is it'll dry up your voice. You'll start to feel very thirsty, right? So in order to feel more relaxed, you should chew your tongue, like literally take the tongue and chew it on one side, keep chewing, you know? And then you'll start noticing saliva is released and that saliva is your body temperature. It'll actually calm down, it'll hydrate the uh, vocal muscles just the right way. So... Chew your tongue. Do not chew gum. I have seen people chewing gum before going up on the, on the stage, and that definitely is not the right uh, thing to do because it'll dry up your um, mouth even more. And then more more you feel the dryness, you're going to be um, chugging down more water, and that water is either going to be cold or warm or you know whatever temperature, and that's not going to help. If you have already warmed up your voice and you're drinking cool water, cold water, it's going to cool down your uh, muscles. So beware of all those things. So make sure you just chew your tongue and uh, it'll calm down your nervous system. It'll calm down the, the fear that you have and it'll just hydrate your uh, voice. Okay, next is uh, taking a peek at the audience. Uh, as I said, like, you know, getting a jolt every time looking at the audience doesn't help. So what you should do is like, just take a peek and just be aware how the seating arrangement is. How, who are uh, like, you know, even if you know, uh, let's say 5% of the audience, or even if it's like friends and family that you're, uh, you're performing in front of, uh, just knowing them help, uh, helps definitely to 
feel more at ease uh, with the audience and uh, just just feeling relaxed okay and that's all we need to go on for the next one which is visualization technique that i do personally uh, is like once you know the audience once you know the seating arrangement that they have um, you visualize your yourself either closed eyes or open eyes doesn't matter uh just just do it for like 5 seconds or 10 seconds imagine you're you're doing great you're you're completely comfortable facing the audience and um you know so that's a visualization technique that you should do um and then the next one is be ready with your notes homework preparedness music instruments audio equipments musicians communication everything like be really really 100% like 200% ready with your own homework okay and that will definitely take away uh, the fear uh, some some of the fear and um, next one having too much of fun um, you know imagine you you meet somebody who came to your performance after such a long time you you want to catch up and you know have some fun before going up on the stage try avoiding uh, avoid uh, try uh, avoiding that because that will tire your muscles uh, vocal muscles and dry up and again everything goes back to hydrating the muscles and if you don't want to be hydrating the you know the wrong way so avoid having that uh, heavy conversations right before going up on the stage enjoy yourself on stage always imagine um you're doing great and just just feel more confident and comfortable on the stage and just 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 feel good about yourself uh, enjoy yourself and the last one not the least is just keep practicing practice 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 your own music practice uh, being in front of the audience more and more so that your uh, stage fear goes away with time so that is about this and the next one uh is tips for riyaz um shama do we have any questions before we move on we actually have a lot of questions coming in for uh riyaz so we can oh, cool we can do we can do the q and a uh, after this slide okay great are we on time we have 15 minutes okay great so tips for riyaz um riyaz is music practice and uh, these are some of the do's and don'ts that i typically follow uh with myself and also with my students is that pay attention to the posture why you should pay attention to the posture not because your teacher is saying okay sit up straight sing uh sing with your head straight not because that but you need to understand that if you're you know if your shoulders are not straight if you're slouching if you're uh you know you're sitting crooked or something or you're just sitting on a couch or a bed your vertebra is not straight and that actually is not engaging the engaging the chest muscles uh that are mainly responsible for bringing out the voice uh you're not engaging the stomach muscles properly and hence you probably lack the power um of 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 the throw that you need right so in order to make sure that you're utilizing all that all the muscles you have and uh utilizing the 100% make sure to pull back your shoulder up and literally you know sit up straight make your vertebra straight sit on a chair or just on the floor whichever way you're comfortable but make sure you're sitting on a flat surface not a cushiony surface uh for a uh, riyas so that's very essential not just riyas but even for performances or uh you know any any uh, time you're singing make sure to um watch your posture even while standing uh, there are people who um do not pay attention uh, while standing so more you're st straight and more you keep your head straight you're actually opening up all the vocal muscles here and you're basically utilizing all the power that you have okay so next one is exercising your core muscles to better your stomach voice uh it's 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 fu it's funny but it works um so it's not the stomach that is producing the voice we have already see, seen that but it's the power that is coming from the stomach so more uh, power you have in your core uh, should uh, be directly proportional to more eff uh, you know more effortlessly you use that power in singing uh, with your stomach voice next one keep a particular time for riyas and practice as we've already seen this point in the last slide um we have muscle memory so just keep 
uh, engaging the muscles at the right time every single day, even if it's for 10, 15 minutes, um, that's the minimal that you um, should start doing um, up to you know a few hours if you want to. But make sure that you keep a particular time and uh, uh, every day you do this. Then coming to hum, uh, the next one is hum your favorite songs by yourself, not with the original tracks. We've seen this in the uh, previous slide as well. Uh, with the original tracks, your hum is going to be a lot higher than your usual voice. And that's going to be straining your voice. That's going to be straining your head voice and probably damage uh, in the long run. So watch out. But definitely hum. Um, you're free to hum your favorite songs all day long. Um, and humming is a very good uh, exercise because it prepares your, uh, it actually prepares your muscles. Your subconscious uh, is actually working uh, to make sure that your muscles are ready because when you're humming, you're actually using less effort. But when you start singing that same song, you will see those songs are coming to you very easily. Next one, uh, making sure to do Kharaj Riyaz if you sing on karaoke or uh, songs on original scale. Karaj Riyaz, uh, the term means Riyaz of lower octave notes. And that's very essential because the lower octave notes are the base, the foundational notes that uh, we have. And more you exercise them, they, they, they are basically the, uh, the base of the uh, base of your voice. And if you exercise them more, you get the power from them. You get the uh, voice modulation uh, going from the courage uh, lower octave notes. Like you've seen probably in Pirli Ayadil, the, the bassy voice uh, was so... Um, so essential to express the lyrics of the song, right? And then, um, and that has come from Karaj Riyas. So definitely do Karaj Riyas, especially the lower octave uh, notes need to be exercised in order to sing higher, uh, higher notes. And this is really, um, you know, it's, it's very directly uh, proportional. So more you exercise those deeper muscles, you're, you're basically powering the higher the other muscles the the you know the other muscles that are along the length of the vocal cord so karajriya is definitely you should do and not skip and focusing on singing it rather than the speed singing it right rather than the speed so we hear uh, many songs which are very uh, nuancy, which are very, you know, they have uh, little variations in between and certain nuances that you feel you got them right. Uh, but if you slow down, you will start noticing that you may not have got them exactly 100% right. So I would say rather than singing it on the speed and just saying that, okay, I'm singing that particular song at the same speed, Rather than doing that, slow it down. There are there are apps. Um, there are there are settings on uh, even on YouTube and other um, apps to slow down this uh, the speed of the songs. So if you are in a habit of singing along um, a particular song with with the YouTube or or any other apps, definitely slow them down. Get the notes right. Sing it right, rather than getting up on the speed directly. Okay. And then slowly, more you are comfortable and confident with the notes. You, your speed will come automatically, but do not jump on the speed right away. Next one is singing in your pitch. It's very essential because we have different pitches. We, each one of us have different vocal texture, uh, tonal quality, everything is different. Our dynamic range of the vocal muscles are different. So if you are singing the uh, songs directly on the karaoke uh, tracks, Definitely, you should uh, watch out because, uh, you know, I can give you an example of the famous uh, song Beri Pia by uh, Shreya. I think it's on C sharp. And I'll try to sing this uh, on the scale that she, ha uh, she has sung. And you'll start noticing um, that it sounds, of course, it sounds good. Um, probably, um, I don't know. I mean, you, it, you probably understand the difference once I do the... Uh, next one in my own original scale. Say, go 
जाने 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 हाय बैरी पिया बड़ा बेदर्दी नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू ब्रिंग इट डाउन टू माय ओन स्केल बैरी पिया बड़ा बेदर्दी बैरी दिल का दर्द न जाने सौदाए हर जाए जुलमी राम दुहाई कैसे कहो कासे कहो हाय राम दिल का दर्द न जाने न जाने न जाने न जाने 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 हाय बैरी पिया now uh coming to if you have noticed the first version that i sang of course i uh sounded my my voice sounded very thinned out throughout probably i was using only head voice throughout because it was not my skill it's not my original skill and all i could use was my head voice because there was no scope i could bring out the deeper voice the bassy voice um that i have um versus when i brought down the skill uh to my own i was able to use some little bit of bass voice that i have i was able to use a little bit of stomach voice on the higher up um, um you know places so and i was feeling the song lot more than the first version and i'm sure if you do that uh you know for your favorite songs um you can also realize that you get your original tonal quality back if you are singing those uh, songs in your own skill so definitely uh, sing in your own pitch and do not try to sound like your favorite singer you you probably want to sound like lata mangeshkar or shreya goshal or arijit singh or whoever is your favorite singer but uh, you don't have to be like them you don't have to sound like them you are definitely a, a different individual with very unique uh, tonal texture so nurture that utilize all the goodness that you have in your voice and sing in the right pitch okay and the next one and last but not the least practice keep uh, practicing uh, inspire each other to sing and definitely um, keep doing riyas and follow the tips and techniques and try to understand why you're doing so and then uh, it'll actually motivate you to stick to that particular regime more and you're not going to be forcing yourself to do certain way so happy practicing and i think we are at the end of our um session today we are welcoming q and a awesome yes so we do have quite a bit of questions that came in um one question someone is asking when we practice on gar should we use harmonium and keyboard or should we just use the tanbura um good question i would say if you are comfortable without any instrument just the tanpura or the drone is fine uh is is very good for you to stay on the tune uh without any musical support without any melodic support uh which is uh which is going to go along singing so basically when you're playing harmonium or keyboard you're you're taking like you don't understand but your uh your um you know internally you're actually looking forward to that support of the note that you're playing or somebody else is playing so it's always better to sing on tanpura or just uh, a particular chord on keyboard don't play along and uh, see how much you are able to stick uh, stick to the uh, chords or stick to the uh, tanpura tunes another person's asking can one increase one's range and sing at a higher pitch with riyas definitely um, that many songs that i like to sing are sung at high pitches but not the best pitch for me and if i sing at a lower pitch it sounds really flat yeah exactly and uh yes we um i think in the first slide we uh, we did uh, talk about you know there there are two reasons why we are not able to sing comfortably the high and low notes one the first reason was probably our dynamic range of the uh, vocal muscles are limited and yes we are there are techniques to extend um the range with gradual and uh, consistent riyas and there are certain techniques and probably 
I will come up with a video. Uh, it will take some time uh, for for us to understand, you know, the RIAS techniques. But yes, definitely there are uh, certain ways you can increase the uh, techniques. Uh, sorry, you can increase the octave, uh, the range that you have. Someone else is also asking how to sustain uh, a note or their voice for a longer period of time. Um, someone's not able to do it, so how can you improve on that? Yeah, so if you're not able to uh, sustain your voice at a particular note, keep doing that, keep pra practicing that. Like I had that issue when I was really starting out. Um, I think uh, when I was starting out with pure, uh, you know, exponential um, classical kayal um, gaiki. So I had that issue when I, my voice would shake, it would tremble, um, um, it, it would tremble for uh, for for one uh, one uh, particular note, like let's say sa. So if you have a problem holding that note, so keep the sa continuously, uh, like keep the tanpura on first of all, and then keep singing uh, along, like keep, just practice sa, and and record yourself and listen to yourself and you'll see yourself improving so more and more you do this more and more you'll improve so there's there's no shortcut for that so yeah just keep at it and then someone's asking um what's your opinion is it good to be singing on a lower pitch so yeah i mean uh Pitch is very individual factor, right? So every individual has different pitches. Um, when you say lower pitch, do you mean lower than the original track? And if you feel that that particular lower pitch is your own pitch, definitely, yes, it's a good idea to keep yourself to the pitch and to your own pitch and not follow the original uh, scale. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I mean, if you if you feel um, going back to the the previous question uh, of somebody who asked that, um, you know, the lower pitch sounds a little flat. Yes. So if you feel that it sounds flat and you don't have that spark in in your singing when you're using that lower scale, you just have to work around and see what is your scale for every song. Like that's what I do typically. Like um, my scale for classical is A sharp and or maybe A sometimes. But uh, for every song, I have different pitch and every song. When I sing at different times, maybe in the morning, it has different pitch. Uh, when I'm singing in the evening, it's a little higher, so my voice is warmed up and I can go higher and easily. So, yeah, your pitch is going to be um, susceptible to many conditions, your own body conditions, your weather conditions, and uh, your own understanding. So keep working uh, around uh, to see what works the best for each and every song. How does one know of his or her voice pitch or the scale that they should be singing on? Great question. I, um, yeah, so what I would say, it, it has a longer explanation, and I know we are pretty much tight on time, but one sentence I can say is st just, just ballpark uh, at one particular um, pitch and then start singing sa re gama pada ni sa, up till sa, and feel your comfort level. Um, I can give you some little example to see uh, if if you understand by what I mean. So you have to sing the entire octave in that one particular uh, scale that you choose and then feel it out. Like if you feel that your voice is training on the higher sa, then just bring it half note down. And if you feel just, uh, or, or maybe like, you know, uh, if you bring it two notes down or one note down, you feel that the lower note, uh, lower sa is just not, you know, just not comfortable or just shaky, then just bring it up high. So you have to c constantly figure out, like consistently figure out what is your uh, pitch. So for example, I'll sing sa re gama vadha nisa on, on B, or maybe I'll start with A. Mm -hmm. So on this A scale, I feel my sa is a little um, not comfortable. So maybe I'll bring it up high, just half a note high. So I took A sharp. Sa re ga ma pa da ni sa 
I think this is fine. Although I'm um, I'm running out of breath uh, on the higher um, sa, but I think uh, this is going to be my regular pitch for practice for riyas. But when it comes to singing a particular song in your own pitch, every song has its own uh, sa uh, different, right? For example, if I sing Pirli Ayadil, hmm, this is my sa. फिर ले आया तो फिर ले आया स्टार्ट्स फ्रॉम द लोअर पा पानी सा सो यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई वेयर द सा ऑफ द सॉन्ग बिलोंग्स टू एंड वंस यू आइडेंटिफाई दैट पर्टिकुलर सा देन यू मैच विथ योर पिच सा एंड देन फिगर आउट वेयर यू नीड टू बी Awesome, and we have one last question. Um, how t- how do you improve the throw or the projection of your voice? Voice modulation, <laughs> no other uh, answer for that. I would say uh, voice uh, throw and projection is mainly um, it comes from stomach uh, voice and uh, the power of the stomach voice. I would say, and uh, more you start unleashing the stomach voice power, and also start managing it controlling it uh, not just shouting will will help but you actually have to control and uh, release it slowly and basically observe how much of a throw you need and uh, i would say go by the feel of the song like how i um, explained with pirle aaya the the higher uh, up uh, notes that i sang you need you needed that feel in order to bring out that stomach voice so when i was singing the higher uh, end uh, portion i was not thinking in my mind like oh technically now it's the higher time i should um, use my stomach voice no i was going by the lyrics i was going by the feel of the song so do that i mean um, more you focus on the feel of the song and uh, what you want to express through the lyrics i would say your voice modulation will follow I mean we've understood a lot of technicalities today in the session but I would say more you con- concentrate on the um on the feeling that you want to express or the lyrics is uh, expressing all these modulation techniques will come to you very naturally like if there are like subtle places that you want to uh, highlight you will naturally use your head voice you'll naturally thin out your voice or there are certain places that you need to be, be like really aggressive um, then you will throw uh, with your stomach voice uh, more on that so you will do that naturally more and more you are aware of um, of of the of the exp- expressions and the feelings awesome thank you so much shiva for your time um and for everyone for joining in Uh Shiva we do have your social media available on the presentation right now so if you want you can let uh, the audience know where they can reach you I believe you're on YouTube Facebook Instagram you have a website you have an email um and it's Shiva Chaki uh Instagram is classical_shiva uh so feel free to connect with her if you'd like to take any lessons and um I'll just learn from her so thank you everyone once again I believe this recording will be available um in the next uh, 48 hours so stay tuned for that and thank you once again stay safe thank you so much shama and thank you everybody uh for uh for joining today i was so excited to present this session today and um yeah i look forward to um seeing your questions if you have any